five minute charging. It's the holy grail for electric cars, right? The tech that promises to make charging up your EV as quick as a trip to the petrol station. That five minutes we're all quoted. The media eats it up. Companies are dumping billions into the race to make it happen. And it's sold as the final puzzle piece for getting everyone into an EV. And we see headlines every other week about some wild new battery from a tech giant that can add hundreds of miles of range quicker than the time it takes you to grab a cup of coffee. Now more on that later. Well, the promise is simple. Kill range anxiety, make electric cars just as convenient as the gas guzzlers we're all used to. It's the ultimate fix. But what if the whole thing is a myth? Not the technology itself. No, that's very real and very cool. The myth I'm talking about is that you actually need it. What if I told you this multi-billion tech race is solving a problem most EV drivers simply don't have? Today, we're digging into why the frantic, expensive chase for a five minute charge completely ignores the simple, boring and massively better reality of how millions of people already use their EVs every single day. We're going to tear down the hype and show you the cheaper, smarter solution. I'm Dave and I'm taking on the five minute charging myth. Buckle up. Well, let's be honest, the appeal of a five minute charge is powerful because it feels familiar. For over a hundred years, our entire relationship with our car has been based on those trips to the petrol station. You drive until you're running low, you pull over for a few minutes, you fill it up and you're back on your way. It's a habit that's practically baked into our DNA. So when people start thinking about switching to an EV, their brain immediately tries to cram it into that exact same box. Some researchers have called this the petrol mentality. We picture ourselves driving our EV to empty, then frantically looking for a place to get a full tank as fast as humanly possible. But as a regular state, an EV is not a petrol car. See, this mindset is the perfect breeding ground for charging anxiety. It's the number one fear you hear about. The fear of getting stranded, of wasting hours at a charger, the fear that an EV just can't keep up with a busy lifestyle. And the car makers know it. They see that anxiety and they sell the five minute charging as the magic pill. They tell us that to make EVs mainstream, we have to copy the petrol station experience. Billions are being spent on this one single assumption. Now, on the surface, it makes total sense. If you can make charging an EV feel exactly like filling a gas car, then no more excuses, right? It feels like the last barrier to fall. The problem is the entire premise is flawed. It's based on a habit that becomes almost completely obsolete the second you actually own an EV. And we EV drivers know the reality. So let's pivot from the hype to reality. How does it actually work? Well, here's the simple truth. The five minute charge story always leaves out. The huge majority of EV charging doesn't happen at some futuristic supercharger. It happens quietly overnight in your garage or out on your drive while you're fast asleep. In the UK, ZapMap surveys and data consistently show that the vast majority of charging, somewhere between 70 and 85%, happens at home or at the workplace. Well, the best way to think about it, and you've probably heard this before, is just your phone. No, seriously, think about it. Do you run your phone down to 1% and then sprint to a five minute phone charging station to frantically power it back up? No, of course not. For the vast majority of us, you get home, you plug it in, whether or not it's empty, and then you start every new day with a full battery. Most of us don't even think about it. This should be the model that the majority of us with an EV follow, because this is exactly how most people who drive an EV 
actually use their EV. They get home, they take 10 seconds to plug it in, and the next morning they wake up, they've got a full tank. The vast majority of EV drivers start every day with all the range they could possibly need. The old habit of driving until empty and making a special trip to refuel, <laughs> it's so last gen, so redundant, so holding us back. Well, let's look at the numbers. You see, the average daily commute in the UK is well under 20 miles. That's it. Even the most basic standard 3-pin 13-amp socket using a level 1 charger can add more than 50 mile range overnight. If you have a slightly beefier 7 kilowatt level 2 charger, you can get over 200 miles of range added while you're watching a movie or sleeping. You don't need 5 minutes. You've got 8 to 12 hours, and you're not even awake for most of it. The car just takes care of itself. Now, this isn't a far-off dream. It's the boring, wonderful reality for millions of EV drivers right now. By the way, if you're finding this breakdown useful and you enjoy seeing the hype, get a reality check. Do me a favour, just hit that subscribe button. It really helps the channel tackle more myths just like this one. But it's also down to cost savings. Once they make one, scientists spot ways to make it better, faster, but also cheaper. See, the next smartphone, it'll run apps 10 times faster, but it'll cost about the same. And thank you, tech, for doing that. Keep doing that. We love that. We love every new one being better, faster, either the same price or cheaper. So if home charging is so great, why is there this obsessive multi-billion dollar sprint for a five minute charge? Well, the first part is because that's what we do. As soon as someone launches the very latest all singing, all dancing smartphone, others are already developing the next model, not the next, but the one after that. Got to keep ahead of the competition. It's what drives the entire tech industry. We must make the next one even better. But it also comes down to cost savings. Once they make one, whatever it is, scientists spot ways to make it better, faster, and also cheaper, usually for them. The next smartphone will run apps even 10 times faster than that, but it'll end up costing about the same. Well, some people claim that shoving that much energy into a battery that fast creates a ton of heat. That puts a massive strain on the battery, which will fail far sooner, maybe. But science can solve that one with new materials or processes. Many people claim we don't need it because most EVs on the road today can't even handle those speeds. Yeah, but most EVs aren't standing still either. They're developing probably as fast as the batteries. But the battery is only half the problem. The other half is the grid. And this is where the five minute fantasy crashes into a brick wall of logic. If we get most people to charge their EVs at home, do they actually need five minute charging at all? Then, to get a full charge in five minutes, you're going to need a charger that delivers around one megawatt of power. Put that into perspective, a single one megawatt charger can draw as much power as over a hundred homes combined. A charging station with a dozen of these could have the same power draw as a small town. And that would be at peak times, looking at the EV public charging data. We don't top up overnight at public chargers. Public chargers are largely empty overnight and busy during the day. But our grid has developed to be able to offer excess electricity overnight. Hmm. So for the last 50 years, we've had too much electricity overnight, and the grid has offered us that cheap rate Economy 7 originally, and then they invented night storage heaters to soak it up. Now, back in the day, this was a coal-fired power station, and you couldn't turn those off overnight. They took hours, almost a day, to get up to speed. But today we have massive wind farms, and the wind doesn't stop blowing overnight. We still have excess power overnight, and although Economy 7 is being phased out, we EV drivers all enjoy really cheap off-peak EV tariffs. So the industry is racing away developing a technology that about half of us will never use. About a quarter might use it once or twice a year. And that requires the grid to undergo massive changes at considerable cost to, guess who? Yeah, you and me who pay our electricity bills.
Well, this brings us to the real solution. It's not flashy. It doesn't make for a sexy headline. The real revolution isn't the five minute charge. It's the overnight charge. It's the deep mindset shift needed by an uneducated public to quote Jim Farley, the CEO of Ford. From refueling to recharging, we need to get away from trying to copy the outdated ICE methods and adopt the new EV methods. The ultimate goal shouldn't be trying to make a trip to the EV charging station only take five minutes. The ultimate goal we all should be aiming for is to never have to go to a charging station at all for your daily driving. Think of the time you'd save over a year. You just plug in when you get home and the cost savings are stark. Charging at home with an off-peak rate can cost less than 2p a mile. Well, petrol diesel can be 13, 14, maybe 17 pence a mile, even more. You're saving money every single day. Now, before someone picks me up on this, I'm saying public fast mega charges are useless. Absolutely not. We need them. They're essential for those that need them. Am I saying don't develop faster, cheaper batteries with a longer range? Again, absolutely not. As long as they're cheaper. But we need to develop the right tool for the right job. Public, rapid and ultra rapid chargers should be the exception, not the rule. They're critical for the long distance road trips you take, but only a few times a year. They're also for the people who live in flats and apartments and can't install a home charger. A crucial group that needs more and better options. They are a vital piece of the puzzle for enabling long trips and providing instant access to charging for everyone. Well, talking about longer trips, most of us like to take leisure, leisurely breaks on a regular basis. We stop for the toilet, coffee, stretch our legs, maybe a meal. We most definitely do not want to have to dash out to our EV after five minutes because it's full and we don't want to block the charger or pay idle fees. fees. A 20 minute top up for most of us is absolutely plenty. For the average driver, for the daily commute, for trips around town, for the vast majority of miles you will ever drive, your home is by far the best and cheapest charging station you could ever want and ever need. The only change the majority of us would like is longer range. Note the word like. See, the majority of us don't even need longer range. But if it's offered and if it's cheaper, bring it on. The goal shouldn't be to perfectly copy the old inefficient way of doing things. It's to embrace the smarter, more convenient world that this technology actually opens up. Well, this is an absolutely huge topic and I really want to know what you think. Are you an EV driver? How often do you actually use public fast chargers compared to charging at home? For anyone who hasn't made the switch, does seeing the reality of home charging change how you look at it? Well, drop your experiences and thoughts in the comments section down below. We read as many as we possibly can, but we do get hundreds for every video, so it's getting difficult. But send them anyhow. So, that five minute charging myth. Well, the media is going to keep talking about it because it's a simple, dramatic story. And the technology is incredibly impressive. But it's a multi-billion pound distraction from what really matters. The true EV revolution isn't happening at a high-tech supercharger at a motorway services. It's happening quietly in millions of homes, driveways and garages every single night. It's the shift from seeing your car as something that constantly needs emergency fill-ups because you're running out to seeing it like your phone always charged, ready to go when you are. The real convenient isn't a much faster pit stop, it's the freedom of rarely ever needing a pit stop for your daily life ever again. The future isn't a high speed charger, it's your humble wall socket. And that simple boring truth is far more revolutionary than any myth. I'm Dave.